being on the same page is such a big deal. Yeah. And so I think the first thing is what we talk about is always having agreement yeah. on our cornerstones and our non-negotiables. When you're talking about marriage, you have to have cornerstones yeah. and you have to have non-negotiables. They're not flexible. Yeah. Like it's yeah. black and white. It's like, this is what it is. And those things are important because when you're facing challenges and when you're facing things and you will face challenges as a, mar as a married couple, Absolutely. raising children, Absolutely. just life in general, you have to make a decision before it happens. That was one of the things I learned from some, some uh, mentors. It's like, you're going to be challenged in your marriage. You're going to be challenged with kids. Have these decisions made beforehand because mm -hmm. then it's easy. Because mm -hmm. then there's no guessing, right? Yeah. Thank you for being with me today. I'm Tony Stockton on Standing Firm. And in the studio with me is a extra special guest. Well, all of my guests are special, but today I have my husband, Eric Stockton. And uh, we're gonna be talking about the design of family. And honestly, I'm gonna go ahead and bring you on in but and introduce you to everybody. But we're really, we do this pretty much every morning. Every morning. We pray and we have our coffee mm -hmm. and um, we wanted today just to talk about God's design for family. We are finding ourselves in this culture where things are a little upside down. Yep. And I would say the Christian family um, is a little bit fractured right now. And there's just a lot of confusion, mm -hmm. not just in the secular world, but a lot of confusion that's crept into the church. And one of the things that you and I are really passionate about, honey, is God's design for family. Um, we have a big family of our own. We mm -hmm. have three boys and a girl. We've mm -hmm. been married for yes. 21 years. 21. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, um, but we love God's design for a family between a man and a woman. Yes. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about that today, maybe give a little bit of insight because mm -hmm. this has really become a hot topic where uh, there's been an, an, a new interpretation of family these days. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so thank you for being with well, me today on the show. Me. I appreciate it. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think the, when we talk about family, it's, you know, when we were together before we even got married, one of the things, and we were, this is before we were walking with the Lord, you know, we really talked about having a close family, how we were going to raise our kids and just all these conversations. And really what I realized is there's not a lot of, there's information all over the place, but really the the main thing that we can operate off of is is the Bible and just That's and, right. and and just having a, what does it mean to have a godly family and there's so many different things that that God you know that references about family and and one of the you know when we were we were coming up as as new newly new Christians new new newlyweds you know we're right. just figuring all this stuff out one of the things that stuck with me is just his his design for God, I mean, his design for family, mm -hmm. right? God's design. And well, because we really, you know, I'd come from a divorced family. Mm -hmm. um, my grandparents had, had, you know, I was, I was, sometimes I was in church, sometimes I wasn't, but I was introduced to church. Right. You were the youngest of a Catholic family. Yeah, youngest of nine. Um, now your parents were married for 64 years. 64 years yeah. before, yeah, before um, grandpa passed away. Um, but we still did not have a clear path of what a biblical godly family looked like and what God wanted to do through our family. And then you and I got radically saved right? Um, and uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and just, yes. we could not stop reading God's word. And through that, understanding, having a better understanding, which I think that's where the confusion is today. Well, I, the other thing, let me touch on that too, yeah. is my, you know, my dad was not Catholic, so he didn't go to church with us. Yeah, that's a big deal. And so I think that's a, one of the things I'm going to talk about agreement, but being on the same page is such a big deal. Yeah. And so I think the first thing is, is what we talk about is always having agreement yeah. on our cornerstones and our non-negotiables, right? Cornerstones and non-negotiables, those are so important. When you're talking about marriage, you have to have cornerstones yeah. and you have to have non-negotiables, things that you do not, you're not gonna, I mean, you, you just, they're not flexible. Yeah. Like it's yeah. black and white. It's like, this is what it is. And those things are important because when when you're facing challenges and when you're facing things and you will face challenges as a, mar as a married couple, Absolutely. raising children, Absolutely. just life in general, Finances, what you, finances, all that. What are you going, like, you have to make a decision before it happens. Right. 
Right. And, and so I was always, that was one of the things I learned from some, some of my mentors. It's like, you, you're going to be challenged in your marriage. You're going to be challenged with kids. Have these decisions made beforehand because mm -hmm. then it's easy because mm -hmm. then there's no guessing. Right. Yeah. And you well, know, and you don't want to you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're making an emotional decision. Emotional decision, yes. Or a emotional quick decision. Emotions, you always make the wrong decision. Right. Yeah. Right. And you know. and um, when God talked about you know in the beginning, He said it's it's not good for a man to be alone. He created a woman, uh, created a woman as a helpmeet and suitable for him. Then He blessed them and told them to be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. Right. And so. Um, God's design for family was very clear, very specific, very specific. Yeah. And that was how he was going to fill the earth and, mm -hmm. and, um, and then fulfill prophecy. And, and we're seeing that's under attack right now. Absolutely. More so absolutely. I think than ever. And, you know, when I talk about agreement, why is agreement so important? I think because you can have disagreements on certain things, little right. things like colors of the house or you know, right. or the, these little frivolous things. But or you like the toilet paper this way. Yeah, I like or it whatever, that way. <laughs> you know, just those things. But the reality is you, there's some things you have to have agreement on. Yeah. How are you going to raise your kids? Right. You know, is, Dis discipline, it, it, discipline, all these things yeah. are so important. And so in, in Matthew 19, four, this mm -hmm. is one of my favorite verses, because I think it covers a lot of what our culture is facing today. Mm -hmm. Matthew 19, four says, haven't you read? And this is Jesus talking. He replied that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female. So that touches on one subject and mm -hmm. said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and unite, be united with his wife, united with his wife. Right. And the two shall become one flesh. Yes. So there's agreement. Mm -hmm. Right. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, that what God has joined together let no man separate. Mm -hmm. So he was talking about divorce at that time. Mm -hmm. That's what the question was about. But really it covers a gamut of things that we're facing in our culture today. Yeah. And so that agreement, one flesh, be united, right? Mm -hmm. God's, God's very specific about that. He also says, you know, in, in Ephesians 5.22, yeah. wives submit to your, to submit yourselves to your husbands mm -hmm. as you do to the Lord. Right. But most importantly, I think a lot of times we don't think, we, you know, husbands love your wives. You, we talk about that, but really think about what it says, just as Christ loved the church yeah. and gave himself up for her. That's a huge responsibility say, on men. That's a tall order. That's a tall yeah. order on men. And, and so men, you know, that's, that has to happen first. Yeah. You have, you have to do that first to expect anything else. And it's not not that we are created unequally, we're created mm -hmm. equally. We just have different roles. Absolutely. That Absolutely. are so important to fulfill God's, what God's plan for, uh, God's uh, plan is for us, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I well, think- you know, I wanted to add to that. So I said earlier in the show, um, you know, my parents are divorced and I was raised in a single parent home. Um, and so my view and understanding of well, I really didn't have a view or understanding of, of what a healthy family unit looked like. Mm -hmm. What, you know, I didn't have a healthy understanding of the father and um, him being the spiritual provider. And then the woman come in alongside of him as his helpmeet. And when I started learning that, that was a little tough for me at first. I'm just going to be honest mm -hmm. because I had been ingrained to think differently. I had been just to, 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 you know, I'll make it very simple. I had been ingrained to, to adapt to culture. Um, culture, uh, is, is all about, you know, women going out and, uh, competing against men and getting into the workforce. I'm not saying that's wrong. So don't want anyone twisting my words, but I just had to, I had to unlearn the culture's narrative of um, what a family should be mm -hmm. uh, or what the woman's role should be. And when I got saved and started getting into the word of God, um, learning how to be a biblical woman, come alongside of you, be your helpmate, nurture my home. But, you know, it, it, that started feeling very natural to me. The mm -hmm. more that I submitted to the Lord, right submitted to you. And of course, you've always loved our family very well. Um, and, uh, it, but that's just so counterculture. But now. I think the thing about it though, is sometimes we think submit and we think that really what we're submitting to is what God, we're submitting to God. We're submitting and to I God. remember brother David Landreth, when we were at Long Hollow uh, Baptist, we were the first church we were at a long time ago, 
Yeah. And this is when we first got, and we're talking he about family. He was really big in our He was huge. And, and what he, he said, if like Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be added yes. unto you is a big scripture, our, one of our main scriptures in our family. Mm -hmm. But he said, if we're focusing, I'm focusing on God and she's focusing on God, we will end up at the same place, at the same place. Right. Yes. And if we really, instead of thinking about our emotions or we, instead of thinking about all these other things that are going on, that are going to come against we'll submit us. Submit to the Lord first. Yeah. It's easier to do that, right? Especially if we're mad at each other. Yeah. But to submit to Him and and then what is His design? What does He want us to do? And He wants us as men, He wants us to not lead, not just provide, but spiritually mm -hmm. be the, and that doesn't mean we have to be experts in the Bible. It doesn't mean, but it does mean we have to, you know, be be present. We have to be a part of, the whole process with our kids, right? And, and, and you know, I was gonna add, it's so easy for, you know, probably you guys at home to see us sit behind this desk and talking on TV. We've come a long way. We've come yes. a long way. And uh, submitting to, you know, you submitting to God as as He's your that ultimate authority. And then me first. submitting to God. But I mean, but, um, you know, just growing in the Bible, understanding again, what a godly family looks like, what a biblical man looks like, mm -hmm. what a biblical woman looks like. Um, it is a process. And I just don't want anyone to think that, no. man, I could never, I don't know, you know, be like that. Or you don't know what my background is. You don't know where I come from. I mean, but our testimony is nothing short of just right. a miracle from the Lord, what he's done in our life. Yeah. Just, I mean, where I was, you know, 25 years ago to where I am now is just, and it's a work, it's a work in progress. But mm -hmm. one of the, the things I, I, I want to make sure is clear when we talk about cornerstones, mm -hmm. one of the cornerstones that we made very clear that in our family, it was a big decision was the cornerstone. Number one is Bible is the final authority. Yeah. John yeah. 1, 1 in the beginning was the word and, the, and, word and the word was with God and the word was God. Yeah. Right. And then Ephesians three sixteen through 17, all scripture is God breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, yes. correcting, and training in righteousness, mm -hmm. so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped yeah, for, for good, work. good work. And, you know, I've, I've, I've always wondered, you know, what about, can we trust the Bible? Is the Bible, and, you know, we've we've spent a lot of time and going. And does it apply to marriage? Does, does it apply, it apply to, marriage, to culture? Right? Yeah. Does it apply it's, to all this stuff? All those stuff? are and old it things, and it, it, it does. It's the, well, you what, know, what's the word now we hear? Oh, that Bible, it's archaic. It doesn't really apply yeah, to culture. Yeah, I hear that word archaic all the time. It's crazy. Um, but, and but, that's a lie. But think about this. In the book, there's 66 books, 40 authors, over 1,500 years. Yeah. Approximately 2,500 prophecies have been have appeared in the Bible. Mm -hmm. 2,000 of them have been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Over time, so it, all over time, all of these things have happened, yeah. and in two thousand times, it says, "Thus says the Lord." Amen. Well, we we we're we're big fans of, of Creation Museum and Ark Encounter. Ark Encounter. And Ken Ham you talks have about to go. this. Yes, yeah. you, if you are, if get your family there because um, that it's the Ark Encounter mm -hmm. and the Creation Creation Museum, Museum. and that's yeah. what I'm telling you. For me, that I was like, okay, this answered so many questions that right. I had about that, and. Um, I, th I think it's just, you know, the Bible is our number one cornerstone yeah, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's our biggest thing. Um, you know, and being on the same page, mm -hmm. being on the same page with that cornerstone, we're going back to agreement, we're going back to that. So when we're, when we talk about being faithful to one another, we're not just, it's also being faithful to what God has for us, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't have to answer to each other. We have to answer what, what God's design for marriage is. Well, His standard. His standard. His standard right. for marriage. That's right. Especially in a culture right now um, that has many different standards for marriage right. and, and what right. what the design is for, for family. Right. And, and God, that's under attack right now. It is 100%. And mm -hmm. it's very clear what it, you know, what the scripture I read in Matthew 19, four yeah. uh, talks about that. So we're going to take a really quick break. Mm -hmm. And, um, I want you guys to see this, uh, quick, uh, commercial a ministry that's meant so much to our family. Welcome to Seeds Family Worship. Our mission is to help kids and families get into God's word. And here's how we do it. We sing God's word. We believe that kids who sing God's word know God's word, and kids that know God's word love God. We have over 178 word-for-word -word scripture songs across all streaming platforms, including Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, and more. 
Hey friends, welcome back to Standing Firm. I'm here talking with my husband, Eric Stockton, on what the design is for family, God's design for family. And um, honey, we were talking about cornerstones, principles, um, you know, the non-negotiables in our marriage, yes. but I wanted to move on to us learning the first seven years of our marriage, what a healthy marriage looks like, because we both had to break off some pretty bad habits, generational habits, mm -hmm. I guess, yeah. if you will. Absolutely. Um, and we both, you know, had, had to do that in order to come together in agreement and have a, a clear um, understanding and a visual for what God wanted for our family. Right. And because uh, both of us were kind of confused on yes. what that looked like until we started getting in God's word, which we know has the final authority and has all the answers. But we didn't know that at that time. Right. And I think, let me add to that, is yeah. it's not just about reading, just reading scripture. And yes, you, you can, that is the, the baseline of it. Yeah. But I think it's so important for people to understand that there are so many people out there that, you know, that you can learn from. Like yeah. we, we yeah. knew nothing about the business that we're in, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. we, what I did is I went and talked to people and I, I went I knew nothing ask, about being a homeschool mom. And yeah, homeschool that, I mean, that yeah. was foreign to us. So, <laughs> so there's people that do, and so what, what I've always, and I, t I share this with young people is if you see somebody doing something you like mm -hmm. or you want to do and they're successful at it, go ask them how they did it. And so one yeah. of the things we were doing is like we saw families that were together for 15, 20 that years. And a period, to yeah, and model. it had a healthy relationship. Yeah. Kids were respectful to, you know, not that they didn't have challenges, but there was there was a love and a genuine respect there. Yeah. And we're like, okay, that's what we want to do. Well, so we realized there was a lot of things we had to change. A lot. And um, a lot. you know, the script scripture talks about the renewal of the mind. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we had to spend a lot of time renewing our mind and how we thought and and how we handle disagreements, right? We heard yeah. there was, a, well, I think it was a, I think it was a book, but it was talk, talks about fight, fighting fair, okay. right? Learning how to have disagreement, but working through it yeah. versus not talking to each other and going through that old pattern or whatever it is that you yeah. do as couples and working through things. And we, one of the things that we agreed on is we're going to figure, we're going to discuss this and, and come to an ant, we're going to get to the bottom where mm -hmm. we, and we may still disagree, but we're going to discuss this and get through it. You know, and that was a tough thing to do. Do you remember, which I'm pretty sure you remember because it was pretty big in our, our marriage, our life, really. We went to the weekend to remember. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have heard about this wonderful ministry. I don't know if it's focused on the family. I can't remember. I don't either. I can't um, remember. But uh, it's called the weekend to remember. And that was the first time that you and I both, but I know just speaking uh, personally, marriage was bigger than just, you know, Eric and Tony. Right. Um, what we're doing today, you know, we, we, we caught the vision. We caught the vision that our marriage is a ministry. And um, that's why we're here today on Standing Firm. That's why God has, you know, this is all God. And when we caught that that vision, and I think we both did, mm -hmm. that it wasn't just me and you, it was um, marriage was supposed to be a beacon of hope for other people, you know, a beacon of hope for, for, for the bride, you know? Mm -hmm. um, marriage is a beautiful, beautiful covenant when it's done right, the right way in God's eyes. Right. And uh, that's why it's so important to have these conversations. And I know you and I, over the years have become well, so passionate about God's marriage. Well, and, and just, and just to re reiterate, like you don't have to get off to the perfect start. Cause we, for, we certainly no. did not. And uh -uh. then that, after that, we only had one child at that time and we were literally ready. It seemed like we had five. This was kind of our, <laughs> yeah, but this was our last thing we were going to, or we were, we were thinking about not being married. Yeah. Anymore. I mean, I, and, I think that's important to say and that. After that conference, even that night, we, it was like, it was terrible in terms of us getting along. I mean, it re let's be honest, <laughs> it, it right? Was. It, was, it was, it was, it was, it was like, would you hear what he said? He said that you need to do, and we're yeah, like, he's yeah, talking to you. He's not talking me. to you, not me. Right. And, and, <laughs> right. and then we realized we're like, okay, yeah, what are we doing? What are we, we're like, what are we doing? Yeah. 
And I and you and I looked at each other. I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. Right. I'm not leaving. And I said, I'm not leaving. And I said, let's draw a line in the sand. I know mm-hmm. we don't like each other very much right now. Because we didn't. But we, there's an yeah. assignment, and then we only had one child at the time. We mm-hmm. have four now. And I'll. You and know, I couldn't imagine like what w- what we would have missed out on. But at that point, that's right? the enemy trying to abort again. That's mm-hmm. the enemy trying to abort something that God put together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine our other three children not being born no and seeing the the hand of God on their life. Um, but that's what the enemy does. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And if he can abort anything good that God's called you to or your assignment, he's going to do that. That's what that's what he does. Well, and we're going to share in different segments of some of the things that some of the miracles that we've experienced through yeah. our next three children being born. Oh yeah. There was so much that was done uh, oh, yeah. through their, through them being here, but we would have missed out on that. We would have missed yeah. And then the impact that they're going to have. Yeah. The so impact like, that they're already having. Right. They're, that they're already having. And it's like God, you know, that's the thing about family. He, he's using the family to, uh, to, to share the gospel, to, to get the message out. Right. And, mm-hmm. and we did it with 12 apostles. Yeah. Right. And then all these little families can do it with, you know, mm-hmm. we, with us four or our four children. Right. And so there's the so much institution designed the first by God insti- institution designed marriage. by God. And that's why marriage is this, it's more than just my feelings, your feelings. Um, another, mm-hmm. another thing we remember, we saw the uh, movie fireproof, which is a great movie. Right. We recommend that if you're, you know, I, th- I recommend it for everyone, just whether you're going through challenges or not in your marriage, yeah. um, just yeah. understanding what marriage really is, what God designed it for. Because if mm-hmm. you focus on that and get out of your, get outside of yourself, right. like it, your feelings or what you don't get and really focus on what God's plan is, you, you tend to forget about those other things and you move and you adapt and you adjust. And I think another thing is, you know, is in marriage is really looking at the big picture of things. Mm. If there's a disagreement, if there's something there, you have to, my dad's, my dad was, I love my, I, I miss my dad. I love him so much. He was such a loyal man. And he yeah. said, I said, do you have any advice? He said, pick the hill you want to die on. Right? right. And what he meant by that was, is it really that big of a deal? Right. Are you going to, if you're going to fight over this or get upset about it, it, ha, it better be a big deal. Because <laughs> right. in the grand scheme of things, it probably it isn't. Matter. And you'll both forget about it after a while. Mm-hmm. And he was right. And there's so many things that we just and, go, and Anything you know, the devil can get a anything, foothold and, and drive a wedge and in drive between a wedge. you. And again, that that's a breach in agreement because mm-hmm. we all know that there's power in agreement. Um, when him and I, I mean, obviously we're stronger together than we are apart. And that's the beauty of marriage. And that's why marriage is so under attack right now. Yes. Yep. Um, so one of the things too, uh, we, we had different cornerstones and, you know, those are the cornerstone was, is biblically based, right? And long as we, we have that, and then we had uh, things that we agreed on, then there's non-negotiables and there are certain things that we agreed on that we don't negotiate on. They're, mm-hmm. they're not negotiable. One of the things we made a decision on was no alcohol yeah. in our house or anything consumed by us. Somebody else may not want to do that. That's up to you. But for us, mm-hmm. we made that decision that we looked at. We said, can we kind of tell why we made that? What's decision? the benefit? What's yeah, sure. I mean, alcohol, you know, as part of it is I've lost, I've, I have personally lost five siblings mm-hmm. and, um, alcohol drugs have a part of that. It's always been a part of my family. And I saw it was a part of my family. And I've just seen, I've seen the destruction. And then we got to a point where we said all things permissible, like the apostle Paul says, Mm -hmm. all things permissible are not always beneficial. Right. right. Just because the Bible says it's okay to drink doesn't mean it's beneficial for you. Well, if we want to go back to brother David Landreth, I remember him saying, you know, it's not going to send you to hell. That's not what we're saying. No. But he said, you know, seriously, go What's home. Go, go home as a family. What are the pros of alcohol in your home? What are the cons? And for us, you know, as as generational breakers of wanting to um, not bring those old habits from the you know in, from the past into right. a new family, that was important to us. And um, when God calls you up higher, when you start walking deeper into His Word and His ways, there's going to be things He wants to prune off your off your life. Off your and life. it's not in a, um, you know, you're not condemning anybody else who does no. that. I mean, but if, that's, if they wanted to continue to do that, that's a personal decision they have to make. But for us, yeah, 
We made that decision. Absolutely. And, you know, um, I want to make sure that I tell the viewers. So obviously, Eric, being my husband, he's going to be on the show quite a bit. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about God's design for family and marriage and God's design for how we raise our children. And so this is going to be an ongoing discussion mm -hmm. that we're um, always going to have um, as long as the Lord, you know, provides sure. for us to have this show. But um, can we go on to talking about, you know, when we made the decision for me to stay home yes. with the kids? Because I was raised around a working mama. Mm -hmm. That was also foreign to me. Right. Um, and you have a quote. Do you remember that quote? I Did do. You, you do? I do. What did you say? Um, it, was, you remember? it was more beneficial to focus on eternal things than it was a, a second income, I think. Yeah, right? you, close? yeah it's, cl it's close, but All you right. said it's more valuable for my wife to stay home than what a second income can provide. And that didn't mean we didn't sacrifice because, oh, we sacrificed. <laughs> well, being, a, um, being in the financial planning business, I've learned, I've worked with a lot of couples and I saw a lot of, you know, a lot of just unnecessary things and we have to have dual incomes. It's like, why? Yeah. Like, because if you trim some things down, you really wouldn't need that. And I'm not saying everyone has to do that. I think for us, we made a decision w at where we were in our life. We had to make a decision. And that yeah. decision was we wanted you to be home and we wanted you to be with our kids because there was just so much work to do for us. And it was just with our with the way we wanted to change things. Mm -hmm. And our son went to daycare for <laughs> early on and it was a disaster. It was awful. He, I think he it bit was, everybody. It tore my heart out. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. It was hard. And, and so we were like, okay, this is not working. And when you came home, our business was okay. We were barely making it by and we were driving very old cars. We made a decision, you know, we didn't go on vacation. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't go out to eat. I don't, yeah. we never went out and did anything, but we, we knew it was temporary. And we talk about yeah, being broke, right. is, being broke is temporary. Right. Being, okay. uh -huh. being poor is eternal, and not yeah. just poor financially, but poor minded in anything is right. eternal. But broke or temporary situations are temporary. You, yeah. Those things can change by making some adjustments. And so we made that decision for you to do that, and then and then homeschooling mm -hmm. was the thing that was so foreign to me. We both of us. It was we are first generational homeschoolers. You yes. were not homeschool. You went to a Catholic school. I went to I call it government public school. Right. Um, but I mean, we, all this was new for us. Right. All that was new for it us. It was and all the labels came yeah. and everyone told us we're crazy and we shouldn't do this, that. And yeah, our kids are absolutely thriving. They're great in sports. They have friends. They you know, they yeah. they and have a can, great life. They have. A, and we said, do you guys want to go to school? And they're like. No, 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 we don't want to do that. Um, you uh, know, we don't, uh, we actually have about one minute and I wanted to make okay. sure that you prayed over. Um, and like I said, this is going to be a, um, a continuing conversation um, uh, that I'm going to have Eric come back on the show. But uh, family is so important to us. Yeah. Eternal things are important to us. But honey, would you pray over yes. the families, the daddies, mm -hmm. and um, just keep tuning back in because we have a lot more great things mm -hmm. in store. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to invest in families. That's um, Family is so important to you, Lord, and we thank you for that. We thank you for that, um, just for those, these, this divine appointment to, to invest you, in families and to, to pray over families and to guide them, Lord, and, and to share what we've learned, Lord. And we thank you and we give you all the glory. Amen. Thank you guys so much. I hope you tune in next week.